Let's, in fact, let's go ahead and get started with this. So, step one is to figure out how to turn it on, right? Mm -hmm. And in this office here, they keep these peripheral parts um, in this drawer. Uh -huh. But I'm not sure why it was so securely locked with a piece of duct tape. <laughs> 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 they probably got moved. And they didn't run all right. right. <laughs> um, so, this is, the, this is the remote for the TV. Um, and, and really, that's really all this is, is just a 55-inch television screen that happens to have a frame around it uh, that allows it to be touch screen. Unlike the iPads, which are true touch screens, this really isn't. Um, and what the deal is, is that this frame actually has every pixel, yeah, it's got an infrared, both going down the, the, the vertical as well as the horizontal. So the fact of the matter is, is that you can affect things by not quite even touching the screen. Because oh. all you have to do is break that plane and pow, things happen. So word of what, you know, and I, you'll see me do this. I'll try to point to something and screw something up because it will cause it to move or whatever. So, so technically it's not touch screen, but it acts like it is. So to turn on the TV, I, I simply hit the power button on the remote and it comes on. And at that point, we don't need this anymore. Okay. In fact, we can put it away so that we don't inadvertently, because what we don't want to do <coughs> is that we don't want to use that to power it off. Hmm. Okay? No. Power it on only, not off. Okay? So then we get to this screen. Okay? And um, very secretive password. They're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good news because you've got some in other offices, right? Good news is this particular password is the same across all of our Mondo pads, and it's MondoPad, uh, but with a capital M and a capital P and an at sign instead of the A. Okay? So, and bingo, away we go. Oh, by the way, I should also point out that, in fact, be sure to turn the mouse on. Hopefully somebody has turned it off. Otherwise, the battery screen. will likely be dead and you won't get to turn it on. Um, but and it's, the reason you need to turn the mouse on is because the mouse and the keyboard are coordinated, paired devices. And if you don't turn the mouse on, the keyboard's not going to work. Okay? Uh -huh. Keyboard, interestingly enough, does not have a power switch on it. So you can't turn it off or on, um, it just stays, okay? But the mouse, so turn the mouse on to get started and, and away you go. Now, what first happens with the Mondo Pad, of course, is that it fires, a, a, again, I said earlier, it's just a big TV screen, but it's a TV screen with a computer hanging off the back of it. Um, and so what happens is it fires up the Windows software, because it's just a Windows uh, computer. But then it loads the MondoPad interface, okay? And depending on what you're wanting to do, this may be sufficient, right? Because if all you're needing to do is link, for example, or as we now call it, Skype for Business, I'm not happy that they changed the name. Because now lots of people, lots, in fact, some of our staff as well, they get lumped into this generalization as well, Lots of people think that Skype is Skype is Skype is Skype and don't realize that what we're talking about is Skype for Business, which is a different product than Skype. Technically, I then learned that Skype for Windows is the other product. So Skype is what we, <coughs> what we all know to be Skype, is Skype for Windows, technically. This one is Skype for Business. So, so if all you're needing to do or interested to do or wanting to do is a Skype call, Skype for Business call, this interface is going to be sufficient because all I have to do is tap that and Bingo Skype pops up. Okay? Hmm. And then if I, you know, want to call somebody or join a meeting or whatever, um, and Bingo, look at that, there's a meeting scheduled for us. <laughs> this icon is really makes joining Skype meetings drop dead easy. Because all I did was tap here and then I went over to the calendar icon, which is what this little icon is, tapped on that and it lists the meetings for today. And if there's a meeting, a Skype meeting I need to get into, bingo, I tap on it and away we go. Let's try it, see what happens. Let's 
Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Staying true to technology. The fact that it's lifted twice is a bit disconcerting to me. Um, uh, one I did and one Anita did. So yeah. Well, I think. and one looks like an honest goodness meeting, and the other just looks like a calendar entry. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Anita probably did the honest to goodness meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Could very well be right. Um, the Stylus, it's a piece of plastic. <laughs> That's all it is, is a piece of plastic. It's not uh -huh. fancy at all. Whereas the Mondo, or the, uh, there we go. Double clicked, it works. Uh -huh. Now, a uh, word to the wise. When you come into a meeting that someone else has scheduled on your behalf, that you're joining, you come in muted. Okay, how do you, so how do you, not hearing anything. How do you do point. that? So I'm going to unmute by simply tapping oh. the little mute icon. That's the microphone with the slash through it, indicates that we're muted. I'm going to unmute that. And then I can say, hi, Anita. Hi, Tom. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hi, guys. Hi. I see Christine and Jason there, too, huh? Yeah. Good, 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 good. You notice we can tell who was muted and who wasn't because of the little icon in the corner that's got the microphone slashed through it. So okay. if you're kind of monitoring a meeting, um, so you know, let's... Muted, you can go and... Right, I can, I can fix that, right? I can unmute them. Um, and the way that, by the way, the way that I would do that if I was monitoring a meeting, and I, and I do these, right, for, for the, some of the... Some of the um, Four Seasons Gardenings, yeah, that's what we call those. And some of the other um, <clears throat> statewide meetings that we, that we do, sometimes those folks that are coordinating those ask if I could be online with them to kind of help people get connected or solve problems or sh shut the people up that are talking and don't know how to mute their <laughs> microphones. <laughs> those kinds of things, right? So in terms of muting and unmuting somebody, so if you're ever tasked with monitoring the meeting and you're just there in a the support role mostly, um, the way I can unmute Jason is to simply right click on him and when one of my options that comes up when I right click on him is unmute. I can likewise if he is unmuted and he's being too noisy and I need to mute him, I right click and choose mute. Okay? Such a deal. Yeah, such, such a deal. Power. <laughs> can you tell who's, oh. can you tell who's talking? I can tell who's talking. Let me go back. I thought I was thinking this was a Windows interface and it's not. Let me get back to Hey Tom. There we go. Hey. I'll demonstrate for you. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can I tell who's talking and who's not talking? Yes I can. See the little blue line that's underneath me? Yeah. And this is me, by the way. Uh, and that's always going to be you, wherever you are. Uh, if you happen to be here, um, when there's a group discussion going on, you're always going to be the little icon, okay? And you'll always be the little icon um, because that signifies you. But if, if Jason were to talk now... Hi, Tom. Talk some more. I'm talking and I'm interrupting the meeting because I'm talking too much <laughs> and I'm causing issues. Doing good, buddy. Doing good. Thanks. So you saw the blue line pop up under his name. That's your indicator that he's doing the talking. So that when I'm monitoring a meeting and trying to help keep folks quiet, in fact, what I'm going to do is uh, this view is the default view that shows up, right? Uh, where we see kind of the, the either the icons, uh, pictures, or um, the little icon if we don't happen to have a picture, or in the case of <coughs> our UIE Mondo Dash Paz, uh, we've got a video feed, right? Pretty sweet. In fact, I could turn on our video feed, that would only be fair. Start my video. There we go. So now, there. Now they can see us, right? So, uh, point I was going to make was this is kind of the default view, right? When nothing's being shared and we're just kind of talking with each other and, and conversing, et cetera, et cetera. But as a, somebody who's going to be helping with the meeting from, a, from a, an assistant perspective, I want to see everybody that's in the meeting because what's going to happen here is that at some point in this screen, if 
with, there's only four of us now participating, but if there were 10 of us participating or 20 of us participating, we, you know, it doesn't keep getting bigger uh, so that we all have a spot on there. In fact, what's going to happen in this particular view is that there will be much smaller icons then show up along the bottom here. Okay? And if there's enough space here, it will show all the icons along the bottom. But then if we've got 50 participating, we won't even see all those. Okay? Um, and what happens then in terms of who gets to be up here, in the top row, if you will, is whoever, whoever talked last. Right? Mm -hmm. So if Jason happened to have been down here amongst the, the peanut gallery, but then said something, or flipped his microphone open and we heard the dishwasher going in the background, um, he would pop up on the top row, blue line underneath it, I, I, that's Jason, he's not supposed to be talking, I'm going to mute him. Well, two things happened. Because he was one of the ones generating sound, he pops up to the top row. Okay? And what then happens is, is that the last person that had, the, had done the least amount of talking, I'm not sure quite how to say that, but <clears throat> the last one to do, have done any talking will drop off to that other row, if you will. Mm -hmm. But what I do when I'm <coughs> monitoring and assisting with the meeting is that I come up here and I tap this icon up in the, and for those of you who can't see where I'm pointing, I'm pointing to the upper left corner where it says four participants and then there's a little icon with a multiple heads on it. If I tap that, I then get a list of participants. Okay? So from there, I can then, and, it, and again, if you, if you notice and can just extrapolate that we've got 50 participants here, they're all going to basically look like this. In fact, they're all going to have those icons, right? So you'll notice that my icon, the Mondo Peoria, is the only one that's not muted. So when I'm helping monitor a meeting, I'm looking for those microphones that are unmuted. Whether they're quiet or not, I'm looking for microphones that are unmuted. And I'm going through and muting them all. Just click, 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 right click, right click, right click, right click, mute, 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 okay? Um, trying not to mute the person that's really speaking, because <laughs> that's rude. Um, the other thing that will be true in terms of monitoring meetings is that you're going to have two classes of people. You're going to have presenters, and presenters will always be those of us that have Skype for Business accounts and come in and join the meeting. All right, so staff always come in as presenters, okay, because we all have Skype for Business accounts and we join using our account, in theory. Um, the folks, the other class of participants are attendees. And attendees are our guests that join because we've sent them a link to the meeting, like our Master Gardener people or our, in fact, for the Four Seasons Telenet stuff, it's the people that want to participate in that. They come in as guests or technically attendees in the list. And so there'll be a, and there'll be a heading up there that says attendees as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> two things are true. I can, as a presenter, I have the same um, privileges uh, as any other presenter, and I can demote or promote anybody else in the meeting. So, because you might have, as a speaker at one of the Four Seasons Gardening Telenets, you might have um, somebody from the local garden center as one of the speakers talking about hostas. Well, um, they might be calling in from their place of business, because uh, they could do that, but they would come in as an attendee. But you want to give them presenter status because they've got a slideshow that they're going to show along with their presentation. Well, Again, right click. Okay? So if I right click, for example, on Jason, I'm sorry, I'm just picking on Jason just all the time. You'll notice that one of the choices I have there is make an attendee. Well, conversely, attendees, it would say make a presenter. Okay? And so I can do either one of those. And the only reason you want to make someone a presenter is to give them privileges that they don't have as an attendee, and primarily that relates to being able to upload and advance their own slides. Okay? That's basically what we make folks presenters for. Additionally, we may decide we want to make everybody an attendee, because the other thing that presenters can do is they can screw around with what's going on on screen. 
right? Because we all came in, come in basically as presenters, we all come in with the same set of privileges, which means we could screw up each other's talks, which is just not very nice. Uh, uh, but I, so as a result, I can make other folks attendees, okay? The only exception to the making an attendee is the scheduler of the meeting. And so if Anita scheduled this as UIE-Mondo-Taz, I won't be able to demote her, okay? That's the one person that you can't demote. Um, but anybody else I could, and anybody else I can promote, okay? A um, couple of other things as it relate. Is this valid to talk about? Oh, meeting yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, good. good. I just I just want to make sure I wasn't off on a tangent because it's important to me, but maybe it's not at all oh, important to you all, right? Um, the other thing that I, a couple of other things I do want to talk about, I mentioned that when monitoring a meeting, if somebody comes in as an attendee, and the mic, you notice how my mic, the microphone icons are all blue, as well as the the third column over there are, is relates to video. And because two of us have video playing, it shows a little video camera. The other two, that's the pause symbol, those double lines. <laughs> um, they're not showing their video. But when things are grayed out, it means that, particularly as it relates to the microphone, is what I'm watching for. I don't really care about any of the others. But as it relates to the microphone in particular, I'm looking, if it's grayed out, that means that the computer that that person has joined the meeting with has that link, Skype for Business, excuse me, has not been able to detect an audio input device on their machine. Well, what does that mean? That means if, if Skype for Business is not detecting audio on their machine, it may mean they, they're not hearing us, and it most certainly means, probably, they're not going to be able to talk to us. Okay? Okay. So... Can you repeat that again on what? What yeah. are you referring to that means there's no audio? Right, us? right, right. So I'm looking, did you open up the participant list? Uh-huh, yeah. Right, so in the participant list, you'll see the microphone column, the second column over. Yeah. If those microphones are gray as opposed to blue like they are right now, okay. the, gray, the grayness indicates to me that Skype for Business has not detected an audio device on that local machine. Okay. okay. Which means they may not be hearing us and they may not, and certainly are probably not going to be able to talk to us. Okay. So what I do, a couple of things related to that that I do. If I know that this person happens to be one of our coworkers, for example, they're coming in as a, part, as a presenter and that little gray thing is grayed out, or that little microphone thing is grayed out, I will in fact probably chat with them to say, um, you know, um, if this was, if this was um, UIE-Mondo-Champagne, and I see that, I might say to that, no, Mondo's a bad example. Ah, what the heck, let's go with it anyway. I might, I might chat with them and say, uh, why don't you get out of the meeting and get back in? Something happened when you joined the meeting and Skype is not detecting you have any audio capabilities. Now, on a, and particularly on a Mondo pad, we know it better, <laughs> right? If it's an individual's, um, account that comes in that way. It may be that um, they're coming in on a desktop machine and they didn't bother plugging their headset, right? Or their external speaker or whatever it is they're planning to use for audio and they just forgot to do it, okay? Um, so uh, I'll suggest that and remind them. Now, if it happens to be an, attend uh, an attendee, which is likely means it's, you know, the general public that, have, that has called in to try and join our meeting, it may very well be the fact that they just don't have an audio device connected to their machine. Particularly if they're coming in on an old desktop, likely not, right? <laughs> the other thing that is true, and if you don't all have a copy of, you should, if you are gonna be in a position of conducting meetings using Skype for Business, we have up on the portal, and our staff know about this, I, They'll nod their heads like they pretend they do, even if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> we know about this. Uh, there's a handout up there on how to join a Skype for Business meeting when you don't have Skype for Business installed. Okay, it's, it's basically using the Skype for Business web app. Which means anybody can join a meeting. All they have to do is have access to the web. 
they click on the link that you would provide them to join the meeting. They, their system would detect they don't have the Skype for Business um, app on it, so they would say, you want to join using the web app, and they would need to say, yes, I do want to join using the web app. And bingo, it downloads and installs a little plug-in, and away they go, right? When it all works the way it's supposed to. <laughs> when it doesn't work the way it's supposed to is when you're going to see the little gray microphone. Because technically what the little plug-in is doing, the little plug-in is, is adding audio to their experience. Okay, so the, the web app, they could join the presentation and see everything without that little plug-in getting installed, but they just won't be able to hear anything, right, and won't be able to talk. And their little microphone icon will be grayed out because the little plug-in didn't get installed properly. So there's two things to do about that in terms of troubleshooting that. There's two things to do about that. Number one, have them get out and get back in and try it again, right? Um, the issue, however, may be that they're going to need administrative rights on their local machine in order to install that little plugin. What that means is that you've got to be able to install software on your own machine. Now, for homeowners, that's generally not a problem, right? We're always administrators on our own machines. It's only when we get into a business machine like ours, we have taken that privilege away from you all, <coughs> we being the university, not we being extension, although we endorse that. Um, and it's particularly problematic with government machines. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, if part of your audience is going to be somebody from the from, uh, from USDA, you know, here in town, um, their machines probably aren't going to, it's not going to work because the <laughs> USDA has clamped down those machines so tight that they're just not going to let anything on them, right? So, so the solution in that case is they go through the process of trying to install the plugin. It doesn't work, so that means they won't get audio, but they'll still see everything. They need to call it on the phone. It's not as slick and sexy, but it works, right? And so as a result, every time you send out the invitation to a webinar or a Four Seasons Telenet or whatever thing you're doing, not only do you send, should you be sending the link out, be, all, be sure you're also sending out a phone number so, and a conference ID, conference ID. that they're going to need. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. okay. So the, and in terms of troubleshooting audio problems, that's the only solutions I've been able to come up with. Either retry it and join using the plug-in, or if that just doesn't work, doesn't want to work, have them join the meeting so they can see it, but have to call in on the phone. Okay. The one other thing that that handout will talk about is the kind of audio device they are trying to use. Even if they say, well, I'm not going to talk, but I want to hear it, I want to listen to it. The old style three and a half millimeter plug speakers don't work with Skype for Business. Hmm. They've got to be USB external speakers. Okay, so um, in terms of conducting a meeting, uh, that's really uh, pretty straightforward in terms of how it works. Now in terms of sharing something, so let's say, and I didn't pre-do this, should have. I'm going to hope that there's a PowerPoint on here that's <laughs> worthy of sharing. Um, and so, you know, if I'm your speaker for the afternoon or the evening, I'm going to bring my PowerPoint on a, on a stick, on a thumb drive, and I've got, on this side of the, the Mondo pad, I've got three open USB ports, okay? We've got one already taken. The dongle for the keyboard and mouse is already taken, so don't take that one out. But I'm just going to plug mine in, okay? Oh, I heard Windows go, dun, means it recognized it's flashing red, this is good. USB drive open now, oh sure, why not? Bingo. There's all the stuff on my USB drive. Okay, so now I'm going to share a PowerPoint. Oh, Cisco Meeting Place, isn't that a good one to try? Yeah, that's old. Ooh, this one looks even older. I don't even know that one. But let's, so I'm going to, I'm going to, so um, I'm, actually I'm not going to open it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to um, the Skype meeting. So 
and that's where I was having trouble recently is I get to a different screen and I can't figure out how, can't to, figure get out how to get to back, back to it. Okay, so <laughs> within the Skype interface, and I haven't gotten to the Windows interface yet. Windows interface is pretty straightforward, right? It's mm -hmm. just Alt-Tab. That's what I would use at least, Alt-Tab to get back to whatever I want to get to and put my back. But in the Mindependent interface, it's a little funkier because you all tab and work because it's not a Windows. So what I'm doing is I'm simply clicking back on Skype and it's popping up. And what Skype for Business does, you'll notice, let me click off of here a minute. What Skype for Business does now, and actually the previous, most recent version of Link did this too, is that when you click out of the meeting interface, it throws up a little always on top um, picture portion of the meeting itself so that it's always there available to you and to get <clears throat> excuse me get back in it I simply click double click on it and bingo it pops back up to the window to the screen I was looking for okay so now I want to share my PowerPoint uh, I also noticed that, just to point it out, when you had that PowerPoint pulled up and you were in that folder, you had to hit the home button I to did. get back to the I main monitor. To get back screen. to this screen. Yes. Right, right, exactly right. Good point, good point. And that home icon is simply this one up here that looks like a little house. Okay. And that's going to always be there in the MondoPad interface. So, yeah, good, good catch, good catch. So now what I want to do is that I want to share that PowerPoint. And, of course, there are a couple of ways to share PowerPoints, right? I could have gone the way I almost did, and that was, oh, there's my file, double click on it, PowerPoint. The problem with that, of course, is that we know what PowerPoint does when you want to start a PowerPoint show is that it takes over the whole screen. Well, when it takes over the whole screen, I then lose this interface. Okay, and if we had a chat window going on at the time, and by the way, to, there's a chat apparently happening because I'm getting warned, I'm getting a message that says, there's a new message. And if I want to read it, I simply tap on read, and bingo, up it comes. Okay? This would chat box where the chat would show up. Way to go, Anita. That's exactly right. That's what that show, does show up there. Now, if I wanted to initiate the chat or I didn't see that little warning message popping up that says read, I could have simply clicked this icon right here. Okay? For those of you who can't see where I'm pointing, I'm pointing in the lower left corner, a little bubble icon that looks like a chat balloon thing, right? The cartoons use. So that's what opens. So this one up here opened the participant list. This one down here opens the chat window. Okay, and notice that they happen to be in the same pane. Okay, participant list on top, chat window on the bottom. Okay. Um, so so going back to my PowerPoint then. So if I don't want to just open PowerPoint, have it take over the full screen, therefore I lose the ability to see the chat, etc. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to choose these uh, of these icons down here. We already established that this one muted me. Nope. Now they can't hear us talk <laughs> um, and unmuted me. And this one killed my video or starts my video. I'm seeing that. This one we haven't talked about yet is the share one. Okay, so if I want to share something, I click on that little thing that looks like a computer monitor and I get this pop-up window. And I've got many choices here. The first choice being present desktop. Well, if I want to present my desktop, that's the one I'm going to choose, right? Um, and so if I'm wanting to share, for example, a, an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document, desktop is one of the ways I could do that, okay? Because then I just go to my desktop and bingo, I open Word and there's Word or I open Excel and there's Excel and I'm sharing it. I'm sharing the desktop, therefore I'm sharing whatever's on the desktop, okay? Present programs, second choice, is very similar to desktop except that it's very specific in that if I don't want to share my desktop because maybe I've got Outlook open and I don't want you reading my mail while I'm sharing, um, then I could choose just present programs. The caveat there, though, <coughs> is that the program's got to be up and running. Because what Mondo is going to do is it's going to go out and look for what programs do I have available to me. And if I don't have any programs up and running, as is the case currently on this machine, there's not going to be anything to choose from. Okay. But if I'm doing PowerPoints, and that's what 99% of you will be doing, choose present PowerPoint. Okay. And then simply navigate to the where it is. And in my case, it's on my D drive. And it already figured that out even for me. 
good thing. And I'm going to choose this one called Training Overview Revised from, 19, from 2009. Uh, and I'm going to click it, choose it, and say open. And I'm loading, loading, loading. And they, on the other end, are seeing this basically the same thing that says loading, 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 right? Right, Anita, that's what you're seeing? It says loading, loading, loading? Yeah, and then it automatically made the two video screens smaller. Right. And Jason and Christine's pictures disappeared. Correct, correct, good observation. So when you begin sharing with some something, and it doesn't matter who's sharing it, whether it was me or whether it was Anita or whether it was Jason, whomever, what happens is, is that you, whoever you are, again, stays down here in the little spot, right? And whoever then talked last gets the other spot, okay? And Nita, it wasn't because it was video, it was because you and I did the last two talking, and that's why you got tagged. Okay, okay. Um, and, then, and again, this will switch. If Jason were to unmute himself right now, wake up, Jason, and talk to us, Hello. Talk some more. There we go. Okay, good. I can talk some more. Okay, you, you, you talked enough that it switched for us, so thank you. Okay. So you see that it switched. But as Anita pointed out, everybody else is gone, right? Which is all the more reason I really do need a participant list up here because now I want to, if I need to mute somebody, I'm not going to find them if I only see the two of them. Okay? Uh, now, Give me a thumbs up in the chat window, if you will, that you're seeing my Cisco Meeting Place slideshow. None of them gave me a thumbs up. Because, <laughs> see, I could have gone here and did a thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. So, uh, so they're all seeing my, my slideshow at this point. And what they're seeing is basically what we're seeing. Okay? They're seeing if they've got the participant list open, they're going to see it over here. If they've got the chat window open, they're going to be seeing it over here. And they're going to be seeing my slides right here. Okay? Now, we can change the size, obviously, right? We've got 55 inches to play with here. We could do that. And we can do it just like we would in any other kind of Windows environment. I could drag the corner over here and make it bigger, and bingo, it gets bigger, right? I can also, I've got a series of buttons obviously up here, just like I do in any Windows environment. Um, and I've got the minimize and maximize, right? Like always. But I also have a different choice. Actually, I have two choices here. I've got this one that's a double-headed arrow. By the way, for those of you remotely, I'm looking in the upper right corner of the active window. I've got the double arrow pointing upper right, lower left, okay? Uh, or northeast, southwest, for those of you that are digitally challenged, don't know your right hand from your left hand. Um, and what that really is, is that's full screen as opposed to maximize, okay? If I choose maximize, we would get what we sh would expect, I suppose, and that is we get the whole thing maximized on the screen, right? I'm gonna go back and restore to where we were. But if I do a full screen view, it's slightly different. Okay? And in this case, slightly ugly. Oh, there we go. That's better. So, what, how's it different? It's, it's equivalent, isn't it? It's equivalent to doing PowerPoint in full screen mode. That is, I've lost my chat window over here, my participant list. So if somebody's chatting with me now, asking a question about what they see on screen, I'm not going to see it. Okay? I'm not going to see it. So uh, if I want to deselect chat, I'm going to hit my escape key on the keyboard, and bingo, I, I get out of full screen mode. Okay? Which is a typical Windows thing, by the way. Anytime you're in full screen mode, regardless of what you know, there are other applications that have a full screen view. I browsers, for example, nobody ever uses them, but they have them. Full screen view, which takes away the location bar and some other stuff. Escape always gets you, throws you back out of full screen view if you've been in it. Okay. We really had tin cans. Yeah, good, good. That's exactly right. We did start with that. Um, so, it, 
this is how I would present a PowerPoint. Okay, now how am I advancing the PowerPoints? If I'm using my keyboard, I'm advancing it the exact same way I do if I was standing at my laptop advancing. I'd hit my space bar or my enter key or my right arrow key, they'll all advance. One of the advantages of touch screen though is that I can come up here and just tap and it advances too. Okay? Unfortunately, I can't, I would like to be able to swipe this way to advance, and it did. I would like to be able to swipe this way to reverse, and it doesn't. It advances. <laughs> so any touch, hey. I got close. I got, yeah, I did. I hit it with my elbow. That's what happened. Let's go back. Come on back. Now, can Jason and Christine see that? Uh, no, they're not seeing this. Have a good meeting. We're connecting you. Well, I've already been. <coughs> Don't. There we go. Okay, we're back. Uh, no, they didn't see that. What they. That's a great question, though. What did you all see when I inadvertently hit the elbow and took us out of the presentation? <coughs> did you? Did it change at all for you guys? No, it didn't. It looked the same. Yeah, that was. Thank you. That was that was going to be my guess. Is that it didn't affect what they were looking at? Okay. Um, so what did you do to go back? I went. I went back to the Skype for Business icon down here in the corner. Clicked on it. It popped up the main window that had the calendar of event in it. I simply double clicked on the calendar event again and it rejoined us. Because oh, okay. really, it, it really didn't disconnect us to start with because they could still see it all. Mm -hmm. uh, it just, because of my elbow, we jumped out <laughs> momentarily. Right, right, right. A couple of other things. Um, you're thinking, I should really get rid of that because it's covering over part of the slide, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, what I'm pointing to, by the way, for those of you who are remote, I'm pointing to in the lower right corner where, where you see us, our video feed, and we are currently seeing Anita's video feed, that those two spots down there sometimes do get in the way of slides. And I'd really like to get rid of those. How do I get rid of that? Well, the way that you get rid of that is that if you hover your mouse over the area above your little icon, but to the right of the larger of the two icons, so I'm talking right here. You see this little arrow that appeared? Okay. If I click, and you notice the arrow is pointing, it's trying to portray that it's pointing out. What I'm going to do if I, if I elect that, I have now pulled out, unpinned is the term it uses. I have unpinned that window from this window. Okay. Now that that window's unpinned, you notice it's got the same set of, one, of buttons up there that I've got up there, including our good friend Minimize, which causes it to go away altogether. Okay? Okay. So now, it's not in my way at all. I can continue on. I've got, by the way, I can also advance my slides down here at the bottom, where I've got my arrow keys, because if, if I don't have the advantage of a touch screen, how else do I advance my slides? It's down there, okay? And you'll see I've got arrows going both directions, so I can go backwards or forwards, either direction, okay? Can you bring Anita back up? Show us where did she go? Where did she go? She, I've minimized her. So just like, and in fact, to be honest with you, in this environment, I'm not sure where she went. And I'm not sure how to get her back because if it was a Windows, if I had been in the Windows interface, mm -hmm. I've got my start bar down here, right? And she's just up one of those things down there. I just click on her and she'd right. pop right back up. But in this interface, um, I don't know where she is. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Let's see, let's, oh, at the risk of minimizing this one. <laughs> So yes. Tom, you just hovered over one of the groups and that arrow came up and you clicked on it? That's no, I hovered in the area above my icon next to the right of the other icon. And when I hover in that area, I get that arrow that allows me to unpin that, that double window. So. This is a good point to let's get us into the Windows interface, shall we? Because <laughs> this is handicapping me. And, and since we're still connected to the meeting and they're still hearing us, this is all going to work fine. 
By the way, what we've done here is that we minimized both those other windows, and so now we're back to the MondoPad interface, and I'm about to share with the folks here how to get from the MondoPad interface into the Windows interface. Okay? And the way that we do that is that we click on the Extras button, and it brings up this screen. Okay? And what I want to do is that I want to log in as the administrator on this device. Okay? And it's a four-digit code. And unlike the MondoPad password, which is the same across all MondoPads across the state, this one is individual for you. But it's the same for everybody. Oh, cryptic. Uh -huh. cryptic talk. Uh -huh. Cryptic talk. It's your four-digit street address. And it's everybody's four-digit street address. So in the Taswell office, it's their four-digit street address. But in Peoria, it's your four-digit, and it's 48, 10. 10? I could get two of them, I couldn't remember the other two. So I'm just gonna tap 4810 and okay. And bingo, what happened? Well, what happened was I got a lot more icons over here. Mm. The most important one is minimize. So I'm just gonna tap minimize. And what do I get here? A Windows interface. Thank goodness, right? And now I've got my Skype icons down here, Skype for Business icons down here, and now I can simply come over here, I see what's going on. One of the things that's going on is that I want to choose that, I want to choose gallery. That's our smiling faces, okay? So if I choose the one that says gallery, this one says gallery down here, that's the smiling faces, okay? So that's Anita. So if I click on that, bingo, it brings Anita back up. Okay. Now, if I want to repin her so that I don't lose her, because gosh, it'd be terrible to lose her, um, I simply click the opposite icon. It used to look used to look like gosh, I got to wait for it. Use it. The previous icon looked like this, right? It was an arrow pointing out. Mm -hmm. Now, it's the opposite. Okay. It's an arrow pointing in. And so that's the pin or unpin option. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to choose that icon which says, you know, pop back in and bingo, she's right back where she belongs. Okay. So to clarify for, let's say, the Havana office, uh -huh. our address is 127 South High. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> uh -huh. so, so numerically, what's the four digits Zero equivalent one, to 127? One, exactly right. It's 0127. Exactly right. Exactly right. And we've got a, <laughs> the well, ones that really screw me up. Which is 15411. There you go. That's the ones that really screw me up are the ones that are five or more digits because <laughs> we haven't been consistent. What's yours, Jason? I have 5411. 5411, okay. Yeah, we haven't, I, I presumed that we'd just do the last four. Mm -hmm. mm, sometimes we've done the first four, so <laughs> <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, try the other four is the way that works, okay? And how, long, how long before you get locked Yeah, out? how many lockouts do you get? I think you get, you get a bunch, actually. I think you get... 10 or 12, something ridiculous. Too many probably, but yeah, yeah. Okay, um, just a couple of other things related to part, or presenting in terms of meetings. <coughs> we got a little icon up here in the upper right corner of the slide. There's a little pencil icon, and all presenters will have this. If I tap that, it's whiteboard tools. Okay, mm -hmm. so if there's something on a particular slide, you know, in terms of master gardening, Maybe I'm, trying, maybe I'm showing a, a leaf that's got a disease spot on it and I want to focus people's attention on where to look. I can do that a couple of different ways, actually. Um, <clears throat> I, can, I can certainly grab a pencil and circle something, right? So if I come over here to the pencil icon, and in fact, I can change colors too, right? So if I want to, I want to make it red and I want to circle something so that you see it, I'm such a good circler <laughs> and drawer with mice, right? Um, so I can do that. Um, or I can, this one's a little stamp tool and defaults to a check mark, mark, I can also get an arrow. Okay? Now unfortunately that's going to be a blue arrow on a blue background. It's going to be really tough to see, but, <laughs> but if I wanted to come over here and point, 
you know, point, point. Which would, if I was trying to point to a leaf with a disease lesion on it, or one to point out the thorax of a bug, I could use that arrow. The downside of the arrow is it points one direction, that way. You know, there's no point in that way, and there's no point up, there's no point, <laughs> it just points that way. Okay? Okay? Um, and, and, and should I then want to clean up all this stuff, I do have an eraser icon as well, so I can come in and erase stuff. Okay, and I can come in and erase each of my arrows if I wanted to. Okay. If I did want to um, insert a picture, I could do that. Uh, I think I can also, yeah. So let's say that I had marked up a, let's say that I had, uh, it's not applicable to a garden plot, but let's just say you're all a bunch of farmers and I happen to have a map of a, of your field up here, and I hit through the markup tools, highlighted areas where drainage was bad, or where you need potassium next year, or whatever, and I want to save that, I could. Okay? And what it does is it simply takes a snapshot of that slide with the markups on it and saves it as a JPEG then to the hard drive on this Mondo pad. Okay? So. Okay. Um, questions? Can you label that say, say, save as slide as it being something in particular? So yeah, say, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It pops up with a save as dialog box and it's okay. going to give it a really stupid long name with a thousand different <laughs> randomly selected letters and numbers <coughs> as its file go. name and you can go ahead and change it to anything you want. Yeah. 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 So Tom, to advance slides you can just touch the screen, but to reverse you have to go down to those I do have to go down here to reverse, yeah, okay, right. but to advance I can just, yeah, tap anyway. And then Tom, with the windows, what's the way to get that PowerPoint the biggest for viewing from the back of the room? Same way that we, I can go full screen. And momentarily this will disappear, this will disappear. This will disappear. There we go. I had to refresh that screen apparently. Okay. Now, notice what I lose when I go full screen. Is I lose the buttons down there at the bottom. Right. Okay. So I have to go back to either my mouse or my keyboard. Excuse me, make you, make you back up. But there's no way to omit those margins. There's no way to make that. Right, right. No, because it's going to maintain the um, prospect ratio. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, you get the. You know what I learned the other day? And by other day, I mean a couple of months ago. You know, on TV, when you see, when you see a, a video from somebody's cell phone, you know, they're, the news people have. Yeah. have been shared, uh, and they've got, and you see on the side, you see what looks to be kind of the faded replication of what you're looking at in the middle that's clear. Mm -hmm. They do that because otherwise they'd get this. The TV, the TV studio does that. They generate those faded, blurred out version. What they do is they, because they, what's a cell phone, how does a cell phone shoot? How do we all shoot with our cell phone like this, right? We never turn it like this, which is, would be good if we were trying to portray this on a screen, because that's the way the screen wants to have it. But we always shoot it like this. And so, just fun little fact for you to stick back in there, right? But we could, when we set up PowerPoint, select um, the presentation setup mode to fill that screen. You know how you can... Yeah. Them up yeah. Because when we do the, the four problem, seasons, we make the really wide ones. Yeah. The problem, though, then is, is that if I'm viewing that on something that's not widescreen, mm -hmm. it's potentially going to either on the either it's either going to cut it off or it's going to reformat it, and it's going to be then out of mm -hmm. particularly if I'm looking at a picture of something like grasshopper is going to look odd because it's 
from it. So I think the default's like four by three, four three. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is four three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is your standard definition television. Right. Norma, you want you to do a break for your. Recording, so it's got about an hour on here, so when we hit an hour, it'll it'll tell me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good to know. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit my escape key to go back out of full screen mode, and we're back here then, so that I can see you know, chat window, and I've got my buttons back to advance, etc. Um, just a couple of other things, and then I'm gonna see again if there's any other questions, or I've got some other things I want to talk about in terms of the Mondo Pad itself. Um, you notice I've got thumbnails and notes down here. Um, all presenters would, in fact, see that, have that. And I don't know that I have any thumbnails. Oh, well, I, I know I've got thumbnails, but I don't know if I have any notes with, associated with this slideshow. But if I did, if I had notes, you know, in PowerPoint, if I'd written myself some speaker notes, is what they're called in PowerPoint, if I invoked those at this point, um, <clears throat> I don't have any, at least not on this slide, I would see those down here. Okay. Now, they're not seeing it, but I'm seeing it. Okay. So if I'm participating in a meeting sitting at my desk, at my computer, and I'm the expert sharing all this wonderful information across the state, you all are seeing my slides, but I've got my notes right there. That's what Martin, uh, Monica was doing with the last four seasons there, right. as you could see that. I see that's reading some. Okay. Okay. So, Tom, when you just made that transition to the smaller screen, do the people who are viewing this from the other offices, do they see that movement that you just made? Nope. So they're in control of the image that they're viewing, yep. Yep. the size and everything. Yep. And you're just doing okay. Yep. Yep. Exactly right. Exactly right. So yeah, any changes I make to this screen does not affect at all what anybody else is looking at. Okay. 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 So I don't have any notes there. Let me just show you what thumbnails looks like. Looks like a bunch of thumbnails. How about that? Giving me the visual cue as to what the next slide's gonna be. So that if I don't have that memorized, I can know that, oh yeah, don't talk about that now because I'm gonna talk about that in two more slides. Keep that, right? Stay to the script. Talk about what you're supposed to talk about with this screen. Right? Boom, I tap, move around, okay? Okay. So that's what thumbnails and notes are all about. And again, it's only on my screen. So Anita's not, and Jason's not seeing thumbnails down there. They could if they invoked it, because they're both presenter status as well, or yeah, presenter status as well, and they could check that. Okay. okay. Were your notes added in your PowerPoint? Notes would have been added in my PowerPoint. Yes, they would have. Okay. I deselect that and it turns it back off, just a toggle switch those, those two are. Okay. Okay. Oh, I had some other piece of brilliance to share, and I don't remember what that was related to that. Oh, 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 I remember. Okay, so let's say that somebody at some point during the Four Seasons webinar, probably at the beginning, when you haven't been saying anything but you've had a slide up there and you haven't started talking yet because it's not 7 o'clock and they're getting impatient, so... They start clicking slides, right? They start clicking. They want to know what the next slide is. Because mm -hmm. if they're presenter status, which all of us would be if we joined, we could all advance slides, right? <laughs> but it doesn't change anybody else's view, interestingly enough. Oh. Okay. Hey, um, Jason, are you, do you happen to be sitting at your computer? Yes. Would you have a PowerPoint that you could share with us? So I'm going to stop presenting by tapping that. Okay. So boom, hide the stage. This is called the stage area. And if I want to hide that, I simply tap hide, and it gets us back to where we were. Okay. And now Jason's going to share a PowerPoint with us as well. And the reason I want Jason to share was because I want you to see what happens when, as the non-presenting person, advances slides, how I get back to where I want to be, okay? Because what will happen is, is that you will get somebody that will say, the slides aren't advancing for me. It sounds like you've moved on, Jason, and, and I'm not seeing the slides I think you're probably on. How come? Because you've been, <laughs> what I've gotten to say is, because you've been screwing around with the slides. <laughs> okay? So, 
<laughs> so so if, I, if I change this screen just a little bit here. All right, so Jason's got um, choosing the right light. All right, now notice that I've got, I can advance down here, right? So I, I go to advance because I want to see what his next slide is. So I, oh, pie charts. I love pie charts. Oh, light bulbs. I love light bulbs. Oh, yeah. And now Jason's still sitting on slide one, right? And so now Jason starts doing his talk, and now we're not connected anymore. So what you need to tell folks is they get two new buttons up here. One of them that says, take over as presenter. <laughs> <laughs> but the other one says, return to presenter's view. And that's the one they need to click if somebody says, I don't think I'm on the same slide Jason's on. Well, that's because you've been screwing around. So just return to presenter's view and bingo. Now he's been talking about lamp efficacies and I haven't been listening and paying attention and knows what he's talking about, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the key to getting folks back, okay? If they've been horsing around with slides, return to presenter's view is what you want to tell them to do, okay? okay. Thanks, Jason, that's good. Now those icons to return to presenter's view disappear from there. Right. Right, because, because I did it. Okay. I returned to it. it but the you, you activate it when you went to advance or something right, like that. Right, it, it appeared once I started horsing around. Yep, yep, they appeared automatically. Now, what I did still have, though, up here was take over as presenter. Yes. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. And so that's applicable if, in fact, Rhonda has gotten the slides from the speaker ahead of time because our staff like to do that to make sure they have them. <laughs> Don't count on those speakers coming with their slides. <laughs> Want to have them in hand. So Rhonda loads them ahead of time to this interface. Jason's going to be the speaker, though. Well, Rhonda loads them. Jason then, boom, takes over as presenter. Now he can advance his own slides, and we will all follow along. That's really what that is designed for, right? Um, one other thing, if I go back to, let's say I want to go back now and I want to see Jason's light bulb slides all over again. I don't have to say, Jason, would you load those again for us? I can just come back here to this icon where I initially chose to do the PowerPoint thing. Stay. You'll note, <laughs> you notice under one of the choices now is, oh God, why is that disappearing? Manage presentable content. I don't know why it's doing that. And if I choose it's that, Jason's fault. yeah, there you go, I'm blaming on Jason. If I do that, I can see the stuff that has been deemed presentable content. That is that which has been a part of this meeting. And if I want to go back to Jason's choosing the right light bulb, I just simply say present now and bingo close this window, and we're back to Jason's slideshow, okay? Now, if he shut down his thing... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because it's, the presentable content is now a part of the meeting. Okay. And so, yeah, he, doesn't matter if he shuts down and leaves. We've still got it, okay? Which is a two-edged sword. If you throw something up there and you don't want somebody to still have access to it after you've left, because maybe you're the speaker one of five speakers in a meeting, mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you go in here and notice that if I go back to that manage presentable content for a minute, one of the other things I can do is I can remove it. Okay. And so I can remove it too. Okay. But if I don't, it's going to be there. And when you present a PowerPoint in Skype for Business, it takes away any animations or builds? Um, or does it? No, it does not. Okay. It does not. It takes away automated automated mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. you, yeah uh, but if I put in a build bullet at a time okay. they'll stay there mm -hmm. they'll stay there animated stuff stays animated Good. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's that's still there um, what doesn't work particularly well and by particularly well I mean not at all um, is if you try and go out to a video mm -hmm. or to play a video embedded in your PowerPoint the video will play but no audio Okay. Because what's happening is, is that PowerPoint is really playing the audio, and the Mondo pad, 
like Skype for Business actually it has nothing to do with the Mondo pad. Skype for Business can't reproduce the audio that the application inside it is trying to play. Hmm. So be wary of that. Now, should you, oh, let's go out, that video happens to be on YouTube. Well, I could suspend my PowerPoint, go out to the browser, go to YouTube, boom, play the YouTube there. From YouTube, it will play. Hmm. Okay. Or I can send the link to people saying, here's that video, go to YouTube and play yourself. Let me see if there's questions. So can he put this on YouTube because he's just put the password codes. from the login codes? I mean, is that going to be okay? It's going to be okay because, number one, the passwords and logins are not really very secure to start with. Yeah. And it were, does require physical proximity to the device to be able to get in. Good point. So keep your doors locked, you're safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. And besides, who's going to even find that on YouTube anyway, right? <laughs> Seriously, you're going to look for me? Uh -uh. Um, other questions about meetings and presenting and doing all that kind of stuff? Okay. Got a couple of other things MondoPad related that I just want to talk about. I'm going to go ahead and stop presenting. Okay. Um, can I ask a question before you move on to car? Sure. Um, the, the information you just gave us about being able to pull back up the PowerPoint that had already been shared, uh -huh. in the more option box, you could save those PowerPoints as well. Okay. Um, I'll believe you. <laughs> I don't remember that, but sure. What's that? I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't recall that that's the case, but I'll believe you. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Right. Save as. I've been in at least one meeting um, where, you know, it was a big statewide event that was um, presenters were coming from all different areas, inside extension, outside extension, blah, 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 blah. And the clients wanted those PowerPoints. And it became an issue of, you know, we didn't have them, um, whatever. And I guess maybe this might be a question more for the group of when is it okay for us to go ahead and save those? When is it not okay because we don't, they're not ours? And l while you're pondering that for an answer for any of you, let me share as well that only those with presenter status have access to that stuff. Attendees do not. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Yeah, only, only presenters with presenter status do. So, uh, any thoughts about Anita's question? Yes. I'd say just ask the presenter if they, if they have any objections to it. Yeah. Because I've had times when people have asked to sure. have it, you know. Sure. Yeah, I, that's, that was going to be my suggestion too. Is I mean, ask. that's true. A lot of, it used to be, I don't know if it's true anymore, when I would take a flash drive, they would take it off the flash drive, throw it on the desktop of right. that laptop right. because right. it would run better. Right. And right. so then they had my PowerPoint. Right. Right. And then either assume they delete it or, you yeah. know. So yeah. it, there's, yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah. it's kind yeah. of. Hard. Yeah, those of us within house, we're very <coughs> cavalier about our PowerPoints. You know, we're a publicly funded institution, at least we used to be. <laughs> Not so sure anymore. Yeah, once upon a time. Oh yeah, back in the day. Yeah. Um, so we don't really care for the most part, uh, but that's not certainly not the case with some of our other collaborators that we that we work with and that have their own powerpoints. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. Okay. Um, all righty. So. Other MondoPad related kinds of things, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually minimize this to get this out of the way for a minute. And I'm gonna close that, because that's simply responding to me plugging in my jump drive over there. This is just Windows at this point, right? It's just a big Windows screen, 55 inch Windows screen. And so it operates just like Windows. There's nothing fancy for me to talk to you about at all as it relates to any of this stuff. Um, I guess the one thing I would 
highlight is that we do have Outlook on all these machines, and all of these Mondopads have their own email account. Okay, so the easiest way to get a meeting on the Mondopad is to simply schedule it and invite it, and then it shows up. And that's what Anita did to invite this Mondopad to this meeting. I'm guessing. Just nod your head, Anita. Yes, you did. Um, <laughs> Yep, see, she's nodding. Um, so, so, oh, and there's the reminder, mm -hmm. yeah, just an hour late. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but that's the easiest way to get any and all Mondo pads across the state invited to a meeting, is, or uh, added to a meeting, is to simply invite it. Okay? And you say, but I don't know what its address is. Well, when you're creating a meeting, and by the way, in terms of creating a meeting, how do I do that? Uh, Mondopad Peoria password. Address. Nope. Nope. And I'm not, I'm thinking it's not Mondopad. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. It might. In fact, it might. It, it might very well be. One two three password. <laughs> One two three password. Yeah, that's good. That's all, that always works. Um, so to schedule a meeting in Mondo, or to schedule a Skype meeting, Skype for Business meeting, I simply switch to my calendar. There's an icon up there that says New Skype meeting. I click it. Bingo. Bingo. There's my meeting. That's how easy it is to schedule meetings in Skype for business, right? And then in terms of inviting a Mondo pad to it, all you need to remember is how the Mondo pad name starts. And how does it start? Well, it starts the same way yours does. That is UIE-Mondo. So if I type up there in the to field, get out the there, UIE-Mondo. You're in the credentials. Oh, crud. It didn't like that, so I'm going to cancel it. Thank you. UIE-Mondo. Oh, God, stop it. <laughs> Gotcha. And then I ask it to check names. Look at that. Look at all those. Look at all those I could invite. Okay. So if I want to invite Taswell, there it is. You know, and if I want to and I want to invite Woodford. Dink. That's all I have to do to invite. Yeah. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Right? Um, and so at that point then, when I create this invitation and it gets mailed to them, then the, it will show up in their own outlooks and then it will go on their calendar and if I, just like I joined this one, I click on that calendar icon, I see I've got a meeting scheduled, I double click on it, away we go. We're in. You don't have to log into Outlook, you don't have to do any of that kind of stuff. Just now there, like you invited Cooper, uh, and you figured, hey, I goofed up, I didn't want Eureka, I wanted to get loose, and how do you go in and change that? After or before I send the invitation? After. I uh, can't. Okay. So yeah. Once it's out the door, it's out the door. Once the out of the bar, it's gone. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Once you slip it in the mail slot, it's gone. <laughs> it becomes federal property at that rate. You reach in and you get it cut off. Um, same deal. So yeah, once it's gone, it's gone. Obviously, if I decide it here, I can just delete it. Yeah. But no, once I hit send, it's gone. It's gone. Okay. Okay. Um, so pretty, pretty easy to create. Uh, Pretty easy to create meetings uh, and invite other Mondo pads or anybody else for that matter, right, to the meeting. So that okay. could be anybody's legitimate yep. email. Address. Anybody, anybody's email address will work. You betcha. You betcha. Okay. Yes, miss. Okay. Um, a couple if of you're in the If you're in the middle of a meeting, or let's say you decide all at once you want a meeting. As long as it's all staff and everybody who has Skype for business and they show up on our list, we can invite them at any time during right. the meeting or as an impromptu meeting. Right, right. If, however, we have somebody, let's say Norm wanted to call from home, 
we have to have made sure he had that number ahead of time. Right. And I say that because I learned by doing wrong. Yeah, 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 valid point. Um, and, and in fact, if at this point I wanted to invite Margaret to this meeting, I can simply, this icon right here, this little person head with the plus sign next to it, all I have to do is click that and bingo, start typing in names. And as long as it's one of us, yeah, as long as it's a staff member, we'll find you. Okay? Or another Mondo pad, I'll find you. Okay? Yeah. So that's as involved in a current meeting, that's, yeah, that's all it takes. That's all it takes is to click that little plus sign and invite anybody else I want to invite. Okay. Um, the Mondo interface, how do I get back there? Because maybe there's something there I want them to get. Um, that's this blue nondescript icon down here. Uh, that's the Mondo pad button. And if I simply click that, because what did I do to get to the windows? I minimized, right? How about that? <laughs> I've just maximized this back. Okay. Now, if I want to go back home to get those icons across the bottom for whatever particular reason, yeah, I can just tap home and bingo, I go right back there. Okay. Fact of the matter is, and I just the reason I want to come back here is I just want to talk about these icons because some of them we use, some of them we don't use, should never use, don't want to use. Getting started is MondoPads help. Tool, sure, if you want to go through, it'll pop up a browser window and it'll get you to, to Mondo, uh, the InFocus MondoPad help manual, if you will. That's fine. The view and share, that's what showed us when I plugged the thumb drive in. That's well, the window that popped up that showed me what was on my thumb drive. That was view and share. So if I go back there, there we are. Okay? That's, that's, just, what, that's what's just what we're looking at. The browser is just that. It's a browser window. Okay? If I tap it, bingo, I get a browser window. How about that? Defaults to InFocus's homepage. Ooh, shocking. Um, what browser is this? Don't know. Uh, is it IE? I don't know. Is it Firefox? I don't know. Is it Chrome? I don't know. Is it a proprietary InFocus one? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But it works just like any other browser, as far as I know. Okay. Whiteboard. We all like the big white post-it notes, right? Particularly you 4-H people, none of you in here, but you know, they, like the, they like those big post-it notes. They just write them, put them there. Well, we can do the same thing with this, right? Cool. So I, I grab a hold of my pen, grab a hold of my pen, although I could just say, hello. Okay, okay, using this pen. <coughs> Write a little better, maybe, with the stylus. And the great thing, by the way, and I hesitate to say this because people then just get all excited about that. You know, this would work too. Right? Because, again, it's not, a, whereas the pen doesn't work on my iPad, because that's a real touch screen, this one's not a real touch screen. So anything that breaks the plane is going to work. That's why this fancy stylus, and I'll bet you, if you went on InfoCos' <laughs> website, I'll bet you they'd sell you this for $9.95. <laughs> Plus shipping, right? $12 shipping, yeah. And it's a piece of plastic, right? I could pull the straw out of this cup and it would work. <laughs> but, you know, people get excited about, don't you use a pen on our screen? I understand, and it's a bad example, but it's just for point of clarification. It would work, right? So, I like my large post-it notes, right? But then I want to go on to the next post-it note. Tear that one off, put it up there. And by the way, I could come over here to save it. And some offices, I don't know if this office has, but some offices have figured out how to find their network printers. And so if you all had a big old printer right here, you could just go print and print it right off on your big old printer and you'd have your post-it note right up on the wall. How about that? Does it print poster size or does it print regular? Well, it it prints whatever your printer will accept. Oh. So if you have one of the big... Tesla yeah, huh? has, has one. So it's got our printers that are here in the office listed on it? I didn't say that. <laughs> I said some offices have figured out how to get that to happen. <laughs> and to be honest with you, now with this new 
printer thing we got going that screwed up all your printers? Yeah. Initially, I hope. Initially. I hope. <laughs> I hope it was just initially. Yeah. Um, they may, we, yeah, they may be here. They may all show up here. Go away. Uh, but now I want to go on to page two. So I just hit this arrow, and I'm now on page two. Okay? And I see up there it says page two. And now I'm going to change colors so that I can change a different pen. Page. Okay, now I want to go back to page one a minute. Oh yeah, there's page one. And there's page two. And there's page three. Huh? Oh, yeah, page. And this this whiteboard can only be used live, so I can't. There's no way to get Anita to see it. Ah, oh, great question. <coughs> great question. My short answer to that is yes. That's exactly right. There's no way for Anita to see this. The longer answer is there might be. If I go up here, this right here, and mm -hmm. send an invitation. This is MondoPad's ability to to duplicate to other Mondos. So if I knew Mondo and if if in Taswell, is that where it is? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Mondo Taz, right? If if I knew what Mondo, uh, what Taswell's IP address was, I could send an invitation to that IP address. Mm. Okay. To any other Mondo. Right. But not a computer. Right. Right. And to the best of my knowledge, it's a peer-to-peer, -peer, mm. meaning I can only share it with Mo Taswell. I can't share it with Woodford as well. Mm. Just one at a time. Right. Right. I can only do one at a time. Okay. Okay. So could you just go in and do Mondo at Taz and invite her? Or she'd have to log back out and log back in? No, no, no. But I would, we'd have to chat a minute and she'd have to share with me what her IP address is. Because uh, that's, the, that's the way the invitation is, is by IP address. Okay. UIE-Mondo-Taz is an account name in exchange. In exchange. It is not. This one's name. Now she's chatting with me. She's probably sending me her IP address. Mm -hmm. Oh, cancel this. Thank you. <laughs> See, she did. <laughs> good, good work. Now let's see, can I get this, will this stay up if I go back here? No, no. no. <laughs> Got it. Copy and paste it. One twenty-five thirty. Okay, remember that. One twenty-five thirty. Let's see if this will work. Oops, that's not right. I always want to do one twenty-eight because that's what we all are on campus. Now that I've rattled off those numbers, I've forgotten these. One twenty-five thirty. One twenty-five thirty. By the way, Anita, I'm not sure this is going to work. This is, you know, this is we're just playing around here. Send. You see an invitation at the top of your screen? She's muted. You're muted. Okay. Was it prompting you for a passcode? No. <coughs> That's curious. Okay. That's the passcode. 8215. What's the passcode? 8215. By the way, there is a MondoPad app. And to join on the iPad, to join a, a meeting going on on the iPad, or on the MondoPad, 
I need to know that information as well. Okay, so if I fire up my MondoPad app on the iPad, it's going to prompt me for an IP address and a passcode, and I'm going to need to know those two pieces of information. Okay. You can't do anything on, on the iPad except watch. I mean, you can't. Oh, you can chat. Uh, but there's no, there's no, I don't think there's, eh, you can tell I've done a lot. There might be audio even, but you can't share anything and you can't present anything and you can't. You don't, you can't maintain your presenter status. Right, 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 right. Because you're just coming in from an IP address with a mm -hmm. passcode, doesn't know who you are. Right, right, so, okay. Um, so let me go back to, so that didn't work, did it, Anita? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's will that IP address always be the same? Uh, yeah, it will be the same. Uh, what will change is the passcode. Okay, and the passcode was the, the four-digit number next to the key Cor icon? Correct. Okay, so is that something that we, as we create the cheat sheet for the master gardeners to be able to... Um, to have easy access to this? Well, that IP address for I, all four of our Mondo I, I, I think that's just going to confuse folk. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think okay. so. No, because clearly it didn't work for us right now. And so, yeah. Uh, Jason, and to your question, uh, no. <laughs> because, uh, Jason asks, is there a way for me to share the screen? Um, well, I say no. I, let me, let me, I think not, because if I go to share desktop up here, I think it's going to share the Windows desktop. Oh, I, I, I like a rug. Jason, are you not seeing my, yeah, you are. I see the yellow border around here. That's how I know I'm sharing my screen. So he can see the whiteboard? I don't see anything. Maybe it's only with MondoPads. Oh, that's... Nothing's changed on mine either. Sorry. Well, that's deceptive, then, dog. You don't have. <laughs> Christine says nothing here either. Yeah. So you have to be in Windows mode. Uh, that's deceptive, because Skype thinks it's sharing it. Because that yellow border, and this. Oh, wait, it's now loading. Oh. <laughs> All righty. Well, we'll just give it a minute then. I would get confused as to when I should go into Mondo yep. form, you know, platform or when I should go back into Windows. Or, you know. Keep it simple. Okay. Stay in Mondo. Or, I mean, stay in Windows. Windows that's Just, stay in Windows. Windows. Yeah. Just stay in Windows. Just stay in Windows. Because there's, the, there's really, the only advantage to doing Mondo interface is that you can get to Skype with a click of a one and you're in. Right? But I can get there from Windows. But you can, well, but it's two more steps to get to Windows before right. you can do that. Okay. But yeah, the easiest is bing, but that's the only advantage to, I think, going into the Mondos. And then as you discovered, when I wanted to try and do something, I couldn't do it because I wasn't in Windows and yeah, yeah. Um, going back to these icons down at the bottom, so what we've been playing with, for those of you that have just joined us, visually, that is, we started in the lower left corner with the getting started icon and I talked about that, which is nothing more than the help thing. We went to view and share, which is what uh, we saw then when I plugged my thumb drive in, view and share popped up. And I hesitate to tap that now because your refresh <laughs> rates are pretty slow out there in the world. We talked a little bit about browser. We played with the whiteboard. I might call whiteboard back up because <coughs> we had fun. I had fun with it at least. I don't know if the rest of you did. But um, you all might be interested to see. Yeah, you should still be seeing that. And that's going to take forever to reload, to <laughs> refresh. Yeah, so I'll just go back here to page. I've got that right now. Oh, sweet. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um, I failed to show you, though. Let me go to page four, because that's blank. Because page four is really cool. Because one of the other things I can do is some of these icons that are over here, I can import a pick. I've got color calendars. I've got colors. i got sports. <laughs> Basketball. Yeah. Yeah, let's put that on the, let's put that on the screen. Yeah. Minimize. Yeah. 
<laughs> now I can draw my X's and O's. <laughs> and in fact, I can even, let's see if I can get this. Yeah. Sweet deal, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But, oops, I just got to get my pen. Where's my pen? Where's my pen? Where is my pen? Oh, here's my pen. Here's my pen. <laughs> I want you here, and I want you here, and I want you here. Okay, and then you're gonna stand there, and then the guard's gonna be bringing the ball down, and we're gonna we're gonna pass it over here, and then we're gonna pass it over here, and then we're gonna pass it down there, and he's gonna slam dunk, and we're gonna score. <laughs> <laughs> and there's soccer fields, and there's football fields, and it's just goofy. So you know, it's, so that's cool. That was cool. Page four, right? There's my secret plans to how we're gonna score. <laughs> Um, so we were doing whiteboard stuff. I clicked the house button to go back to this main screen. Video meeting, ignore. That's Infocus's own video streaming process. Uh, <laughs> we don't pay for that. You don't want to pay for that. Extras, that's where I went over here before and that's where we logged in with the admin passcode and then we minimized to go back to the, to the Windows interface. And the only other things you really need to concern yourself over here is would be in terms of uh, either admin logout, which why would you want to do that? Because you're just going to want to go back in. Um, logging off and on. This is you know I mentioned when we first started mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you don't don't use this to turn the machine off. Well, how do you turn the machine off? Well, that's one way, right there. Okay, log off. That'll turn the machine off. Okay. Um, the, other, the other way is to just do it the same way you do it in Windows. You know, so if I'm in my Windows interface, I go to my start button and I go over there to shut down and away we go. Okay, so that's the two ways you turn off, turn off the Mondo pad. Okay. Uh, let's go back here a minute. Um, reset meeting. Well, since we aren't doing meetings, we don't have to reset any. Okay. Um, and because we're not doing meetings, we don't schedule any. So these three ignore and don't use. Okay? Okay. And then of course we've got our good friend Skype. Okay? Okay. Um, let me just check my notes to see if there's anything else on my thing I wanted to talk about. I think not. Is there a Skype for business for iPad, iPhone? Yes. I've so I been chatting with Marguerite on it okay. today. There so is. I just go to apps. And yep, let's go to apps and download. Apps. Mm -hmm. Skype. Skype has to be Skype for business. Skype for business okay. is what you want. Because there is a Skype. Right. Regular okay. Skype. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a Skype for business. And again, it's limited functionality, like it always, like everything is on an iPad. Um, but the functionality you get is that you do get to participate in chats and you do get to participate in meetings. You get to see what's being presented. Um, you can't present anything. Um, How about if you have a Macintosh desktop? Is there a way to do that? Yep. There is a Skype for Business app there as well. Um, okay. Because Skype for Business is a Windows product, mm -hmm. you can guess that the Macintosh version is not quite as robust. Uh -huh. And that is true. You're about, you know, you know, the Mac people have always said about Windows, oh yeah, well that was Mac OS 4, you know, it's about time you guys got that. Well, now we're saying the same thing about Skype for Business. Oh yeah, that was, that was Mac 3.0. <laughs> that's your current Skype for Business. Yeah, well, that's the way it is. Um, other questions about the Mondo pad, about using Skype for Business and as as a meeting tool. Tom, there's been a few times um, through this presentation that your voice has trailed out on my end. Will you talk a little bit about that logistic? Sure. Uh, and that, that probably had nothing to do with t the technology. It had to do with I was whispering to them so that you couldn't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> because the fact of the matter is, is that if I were to wander back here, back to this part of the room, Anita, are you still able to hear me from back here? Yeah, I can hear you better back there than I could up front. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? 
So the other thing that you may want to share with people when they're in the presence of a Mondo pad Don't whisper. is that that microphone is really good, <laughs> really good. You know, I, and in fact, I was talking, I was projecting so that Anita could be sure to hear me. But in fact, if I were to talk quieter back here, my guess is she can still hear me. Yep, I sure can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. When you, anytime you went over toward the side, I lost Yeah, it. yeah, right. So if I walk over here, however, and if I lower my voice a little bit, she has a much harder time hearing me because I'm outside the range of that microphone array. The, the array goes out this way. Where's the microphone there? The microphone is actually, there's, there's dual microphones and they're both right here. Okay. Inside that bar. Okay. And the camera's but, in between. Yeah, the camera's in between. Yeah, the camera sits right here. Talk about the <coughs> perimeter of the camera viewpoint. When we were doing Mondo stuff for staff, we were kind of schooled on where to stand yep, or where yep, to sit. Yep. Let's go, let me go back here a minute and go back to minimize. Uh, and go back to our meeting and go back to video. Uh, let's, let's see, can I? I'm trying to figure out. Oh no, let's see. Let's 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 go this way instead. If I go over here and go to video device, in focus camera. Oh, uh, it can't connect to the camera because the camera. Some other device is using the camera. Well, yeah, you are, you silly Skype. <laughs> um, so let me turn off our video over here. Turn off my video. There we go. Now I can come back here and go into video, whoops, video, there we go. So there's, there's what the video, and be honest with you, the video can actually see a little wider than this screen here. Um, in fact, let me see if I can go back here, turn that back on. There we go, that's probably what, the, what this video is seeing. So it's seeing, it's seeing here, and all along, so it's you know, and of course we've got the we've got the camera caddy wampus to the room anyway. If I straighten out the room, the camera so that it's <laughs> so that it's parallel to the wall, then what do we see? We see. I'm in the back. Let's see. We see. Yeah, <coughs> we see your shoulder. <laughs> But not, not your head or the rest. So it's coming, you know, it's coming at an angle. It's coming at an angle about here, and it's probably doing about the same there. So if you're sitting over here, you're not going to be in the view. But if you sit.